So Dave, welcome back. Welcome back to town. Oh, thank you, man. You like being here? I, I do. I do. I, I, I used to like, uh, I think I'd get angry at the city and then like it. Like, you know, like a back and forth. The love-hate. Love-hate from, from much. It was mostly my fault. It was like I should have, like, probably learned how to speak French in school. <laughs> I always go back. I always go back like that image when I was in class and then the teacher was talking. And in my head, I was like, fuck this language. <laughs> he just hated it. I just was like, when am I going to need this? Like, I was so arrogant as a child. What, moving to France? <laughs> yeah. I was like, then I started coming to Montreal. And then I think it was in a Booster Juice. And I had a panic attack. What? She's like, what do you want? I know she I went in and everything was in French and she's staring at me. Everyone's staring at me. And I think I just said, I don't know. Like right, that was my first thing. And I had just a panic attack. I go, Oh, I should have probably not said fuck you in that class in my mind. When and I had it, the chance. Yeah, when I was when we were learning French in elementary school. Yeah, a lot of I, I know everybody had that. I think everybody's had that kind of love hate here. Yeah, it's, I language. think that's where it comes from, but it's only me. It's my own narrative. It's only me. I'm the I'm I'm the problem. I don't think. Yeah. I don't think <laughs> you don't think the system is wrong. No, nah, I think I'm the problem. Dave's, <laughs> Dave's the problem. How was uh? So you went to comedy nest yesterday. It was the first night of the uh, what is it? Four night stint, right? Yeah, three, so it's three, two, yeah. three nights, two shows tonight, two tomorrow. Sometimes I you always forget. That's not good. Uh, <laughs> it's not good to forget. You're like oh. I don't know. It was fun yesterday. I do like how the club turned itself around. Yeah. You know, not that it was. Uh, it's just it's it's tightly run now. Like the setup is so perfect. It's great, man. Um, Dave and Dave is doing great. Yeah, they don't play Dave games. Phil, yeah, Dave and Phil. Sorry, I don't play games at all. You can tell they don't play games. And Dave just uh, Dave Acker, just a funny guy, man. Just so funny, man. Yeah, he has it. He, you know what I mean? Like he'll come in and just make. Uh, light up a room, light up the green room, and just make you feel great. Like, probably the best. Like, I know he's not, like, it's weird calling him a club manager because he's a performer in his own right and very successful, but it's it, probably one of the best club managers I've I've, I've, I've encountered. A lot of people say that. Yeah. I think it's because he's, he's a comedian, a, comedian. a magician. He's been through yeah. on the other side of the, of the if curtain. If there was more people like him, man, I think it would just be a lot of ha a happier state in comedy. I think so. Like, if there's more more club managers like him, um, he's just great, man. He may, he's always f fucking around. <laughs> he <laughs> makes you feel at home when you get there. You feel like you, it's it's your it's your place, it's your house, yeah. and you haven't been in a while. You're just visiting your parents. Exactly. You always feel at home. Like, oh, I know this is familiar. I know this. He, yeah, he, he got off job. stage. I got off stage. I'm sweating, and he goes, "Good, good, good." He goes, "We we've just added a second show." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, uh, "And you're gonna host and headline," and then he just kept you know one up. Yeah, he just it. fucks around. Yeah. yeah. He goes, "Then you're also gonna do the announcements, and we need a sound guy." All at once. <laughs> Everybody else, you can go home. <laughs> They've got this. So it's like great, man. No, he's no. a he's definitely one of the the better club managers I've ever dealt with, and I think I'm ever gonna deal with. Yeah, I've uh, I've seen. There's some other great ones too. There's a manager in Jack in Sydney, uh, Sydney, Australia, Sydney, Australia at the Comedy Store. J Jack's great, man. Yeah, Jack's great. Jack will make you feel like a guy, um, he, like you know, you know what I mean. He he. He, I don't know how to explain. Well, he, even if you're not well known, he'll make you feel like you're well known. Oh, like you know what I mean? There's no, there's no, because they get like famous people to come through that club and stuff like that. They've gotten Hannibal and like a bunch of people, so he'll make you feel like great. Like I, when I did like two weeks there, I felt like, you know what I mean? Some other clothes will make you make you feel inferior. Inferior. He does not, man. He's oh. so great. Him and the sound guy Josh Yazzie, the bartender, all great, man. I remember. Um, like the bar is, you know, like some cl like comedy clubs, like Absolute here. Like some of the, there's a bartender uh, in Toronto who loses it. Like if you come up to him as a comic and you're like, "Can I get a drink?" He'll just be like, "I'm dealing with." Like, like, he just gets mad, so, <laughs> all mad. And then uh, so many times, I just wanted to slap him. You know what I mean? Like, and I, I think I stopped. I stopped going there. I stopped going to do spots there because he was like, a bully. Just I hated the whole. Like I'm like I don't <laughs> fucking care, man. I don't need to. I need. I don't need to like. Like I'm providing a service, and you, you, why are you being bullies? Why are you being ignorant to me? Like I'm not, I'm not, and I, and I get it. I'm, I don't come in ignorant to go. Hey, can I? I go. Hey, man, I just want to say, hey, man, when you have some time, can you get me? Can I get a drink? I wasn't coming in with no arrogance. It's just right away he just looks at me. He goes, not nah, bit like you know, just the snarkiness. And then so when I was in at Sydney that club, I was just standing awkwardly near the bar because it was bad, dude. Because they were. They were all buying their booze before the show started, so it was packed. And I just felt 
because of that club in Toronto, I felt in, I, in, I was like scared. And you he, can't he, ask for a drink. Yeah, and he looked. I looked. I looked weak, and he can tell, I think, out of the corner of his eye, and he goes, he's serving people. He goes, what do you want? I go, no, no, no. He goes, no, no, come on, what do you want? And then he hooked me, and he'd do that all the time. He has he. His he wanted to make you comfortable. Yeah, and, it, and, and I was like best, one of the best comedy clubs I've ever been to in my lifetime was Sydney Comedy Store. Are they affiliated to the store in, uh, in L.A.? No, no. Just no, the same just, type of name? Just the same, yeah. And it, the, the club itself is amazing. It's theater seating. Like, it kind of raises up. Like, like Ice it, House, like it goes like that. Yeah, ah, and it's yeah. Prob- and the audiences are great, it w- and they really respect. It was great, man. It, I, 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 I've told many, many people. I'll continue to tell many, many people. Great time, great jet- manager from everything. The whole thing was a, a lovely ass experience, man. The comedy scene in Australia is growing. Yeah, it's great too. It's like the, they have, they have the Melbourne. Uh, I, mean, I always say that word. That's that's the city wrong. The name, but it, they have, their festival is amazing too. That's a great festival to be a part of. How you enjoying LA? I moved. Uh, low key, I moved to not low key. I just kind of just left to New York. Oh really? Yeah, May first, I went to New York. Shit, you're nearby. Year. Look at that. Yeah, I didn't yeah. even know. I thought you were still in LA. No, I just didn't post. I, I you know, I and I didn't post at all. I just kind of just told a few some people, and then I was like, it happened organically. You know what I mean? And I just left, kind of thing. Well, you went to uh, assumably a better fucking comedy uh, city. Uh, not that um, I, not that LA is that inferior, but I mean. You do have a lot of rooms. It's not like you're you losing rooms, anything, yeah. right? You got a lot of rooms to do. You're closer to yeah. to Montreal and Toronto. Yep. So, uh, you know, it should be good for you, I guess. I think it was more that I, I wanted to find where I enjoyed living as opposed to it was not not necessarily an entertainment purpose. It was just more of like... Where do you want to be alive? Where I felt comfortable being and, and excited to be, I think. That's what it was. You in Manhattan or you're off, uh, off I'm Island? Off, I'm, I'm in Ridgewood. Ridgewood okay. is like... I think it's like Queens Flushing in Brooklyn. Like, it's like there. You enjoying it? I do. I enjoy it. That's the big I, thing. Yeah. So you found the place that you want to live in for now, at least. For now, at least. Yeah, I like the I like the area I'm in. It's cool. It's cool. All the stuff I need is around the corner. I get the trains near me. Oh, this so is good. So it's like all like yeah that that aspect. I love I love it a lot. Like I get excited. I go, this is great. The coffee shops here. The pharmacies here. Restaurants are here. Subways over there. So that I enjoy. And you feel in terms of writing, like it's opened up your mind. You have like new things to talk about because you're, you're living, you're kind yeah. of living a new experience, right? You're yeah. I haven't really done much stand up there because when I got there, I had to leave the next month for a month for work in Toronto. And then I started doing uh, um, Mr. D on, on, on CBC. And then I just was going back and forth to Halifax. But I stayed in Canada. I was like, I don't want to go back to New York because it's like, it's like I keep leaving and going. What's the point? So I'll just I'll just finish all what I gotta finish and then go back uh, after this is all done. Talking about Mr. D, I didn't know about it until you tweeted that you're gonna be on the show. Yeah. So that's fuck. I'll you know support Dave. Obviously, I'm gonna watch this. Started watching from fucking season. What a funny show. I know. What? Who writes this? They're good yeah, writers. Good this is writers, fucking hilarious. Man. I didn't expect right. it because I was thinking CBC will probably be very lighthearted. This and that. No. This is a smart, funny fucking show. I became a fan. My girlfriend, same thing. Oh, that's amazing. Well, Jerry, Jerry, Jerry writes and, and stars, and he's great, man. And he and he he does it like you. Uh, I think it's all all factual too. Like in a sense, like he's he. That's his life. Right. Yeah. Right before he, before he did stand up. So it's great, man. It was a great experience. And again, I get it. You know. In um, not you per se, but I think Canadians have been programmed uh, either subconsciously, you know, to 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 right away when you say Canadian, it's just like what? I, that's what I thought. I honestly thought. Yeah. But then when you were on, I was like, man, there might be something to this, right? So I started watching, and I was so surprised. Yeah. I, I legitimately became a fan. I was like, fuck, I love this show. I love. There's some dark stuff. It is a yeah. little bit edgy. It's, <laughs> man. it's dark, dude. <laughs> there was. Still, I was surprised. Like, how, how are they get away with this on yeah. series? I, I had this. Well, they're in the nine thirty slot, right? Oh, that's All why right, I'm gonna too, get away with shit. <laughs> but it's fun, and he's super funny, and he he'll he. I'm the only reason I got on was because of him. Um, but he he also like if he sees. He can place a comedian. He's very supportive in that sense. I saw so many people that I, that I knew that were on the show. I was like, yeah. "This is fucking amazing." It's like a lot. he does. He, he that that's him. He's like, you know, if I could fit in, if it makes sense, I'll do it. And he's very he wants to help out. So I, um, yeah, all him, man. And then the the writers are great. Um, there's one writer who, who's uh, Chevy. He's from Montreal, the Middle Eastern dude. Um, yeah, it's great. I met. I only did join on here, and it's the same thing. I think it's like. Psychologically, we've. I growing up in Windsor, I watched a lot of U.S. like TV shows, like Martin and Wayne's Brothers. Okay, you know what I mean. So I, I don't know why. And then I just so I get it. You just get programmed. You're like, 
oh, Canada, like you know, right away. <laughs> like I felt there was going to be a Degrassi vibe to it no. just going in, right? Like the, it's just no, it misconceptions, it's, right? It's, mis- it's not. It's uh, and then. It's not anyone's fault. It's just in, in 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 the same breath, a Canadian comic also will be like, "Man, how come there's no Canadian shit?" I go, "Well, you're you're the problem." Yeah, you know what I mean. There's no solution because you're we're all part of the problem mm-hmm. because you you it, when there is a product and we're like, "Can you watch it?" You're like, "Ah, it's Canadian. It's probably gonna be whack." <laughs> right? But it, it couldn't be further from the truth. I know, it, man. I, it's it's so hard. Like when I tell people too, I'm like, "Yo," because it was on Netflix. It's yeah. still on Netflix. They have like the it first is yeah six seasons. So six. I think the. The, they're on the, this. They just bre- they just did the seventh season. I was a part of the seventh season. But so I'm on pushing people onto it on Netflix now. I'm like, what's you know? They're tr- where's this from? Canadian? Are you sure? Yeah. You have no idea. Watch, trust Watch, me. Yeah. Trust me. And everybody's texting me. They're like, holy fuck! I didn't expect this. I yeah, expected man. something. Completely, and I agree. I'm like, that's how I went into it too. If it wasn't for you, if I didn't see that yeah. tweet, would have never watched this. My boy showed it to me the first day. My boy, he's a very funny comedian, Chris Gordon from Alberta. So he he had showed me he he had showed me when the first episode, first season. I was at his house, I was staying there, and he goes, man, check this out. And we both watched it, and we're like, yo, this is dope. This doesn't even come off like the stereotypical Canadian Not thing. Not at all, yeah. But I was just bad at watching anything. I'm just awful, dude. Like, I I'm, I never even watched The Wire. I watched, like, I'm just bad, dude. It's a good show, but it's, it's long. But I'm just bad. Like, you know what I mean? And I give up on shows quickly. Like, I watched Breaking Bad with my ex-girlfriend, and the moment we broke up with each other, I stopped watching <laughs> Uh, like I don't care uh, as much, so I'm not the best at like you know because I originally saw it and it was great. I was like I should have continued watching it from there, and then I'd watch episodes here and there. But it, um, again, I, I'm not like you know what I, mean? I wasn't I'm not the best at watching shows, but it's a great show. And then I went um, and I and I did the same thing. I went from the beginning. Yeah, it's the, worth it in the summer, and then I was it was great. Yeah, it's well cast too. I like everybody yeah. on that. Yeah, Mark it's well. Little, super funny. I'm a hunter. Naomi Sadekus, um, Jonathan Torrance, of course. Maestro Fresh West. Torrance is still fucking hilarious after all these years. Anything, I, anything you put him in, great. this fucking even guy. off off camera. He's always he's always on point, man. He's There's, always on point, dude. This we need more of this kind of shit to come out of the country. Well, they have Letter Kenny too. I watched Letter uh, Kenny's fuck. It's yeah. Kate Trev's thing. Kate Trev's um, thing. I, that's funny. Yeah. Um, Shit's Creek. I watched episodes. That's funny too. I haven't seen that. Is it good? Yeah, it's not like it. it it's the same thing. It, it's like it's funny. Well, you got Eugene is. Yeah. No. No. I haven't. Uh, I just. I, I didn't avoid it per se. Yeah. It's just there's too much shit going on. I'm too busy. No. No. It's fair. But I would check that. I would check those three. And then um, I always say it wrong. Baronesk. Fuck, I can't pronounce it, bro. Baroness Vest. <laughs> what is this? It's a sketch show with uh, I think four, four, five late, five, five, five very funny people, but the ladies. Baron Baroness Vest. Ah, I can't say it. Where's it on CBC? It's on CBC. It's a Fucking sketch CBC's show. CBC's yeah. uh... coming in with heat. <laughs> yeah, holy shit. <laughs> they must have got mad. They were like, "We'll show you, fuckers." Because <laughs> people love comedy, and yeah. I don't know. That's like... Yeah, that's another. There's a lot of. I'm the within the last I would say I feel like four five years maybe like e- even now it's like I think Canada's cooking, like they're cooking they're doing great. You got your own uh, you got your own podcast right? No, no, you're on a podcast. Weren't you Not on a chance, a, no? man? I should get I should do a podcast. Yeah, it was, last time I spoke to you when you were in town, I think I told you to get started on a fucking podcast, yeah. and I thought you'd listen, but you haven't evidently. No, I tried. <laughs> Oh, you did tell me. I think I'm going to do a, a podcast with another comedian from New York, and we were talking about doing a podcast where it was like where you talk about your uh, your weird your weirdo anxieties. Okay, like, I like you this. go on, and then and and we'd have to each episode we share three of our weirdo anxieties, like not like the normal like some fucked up shit that you feel, and we would try to have guests on where they would share, it and we would try to solve it. Oh, I like this. You, like kind of solutions of how you could solve this. Uh, um, like I, I have a, I used to, when I would be walking down the street, if I saw an X on the sidewalk, I'd only walk on the right side. I couldn't walk on the left side. If I walked on the left side, I'd have to come back around and do the right side. Really? Yeah, because I thought if I went on the left side, something bad would happen. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> I had the, the, the thing with the lines, the cracks. Yeah. I would have to walk over them. Yeah, like I would walk funny awkwardly because I'd be, you know, they're yeah. not all equal, I've so I can't that. just walk the same steps and always cross them. Yeah, so I always looked like, some, what was the guy? Is he skipping? <laughs> I know, you look crazy. But for some reason, it was like this OCD in my head. I was like, yeah. oh, no, I'm skipping. Like something's yeah. gonna happen if I step over that line. Well, that there's, I feel there's a lot of that. So then we were gonna try to, because I never wanted to do a podcast, me personally, where I, I would just be screaming at things. Like I had to be, <laughs> I had to be 
Because I think sometimes it, when sometimes people see me perform, and like, oh, he screams at things. And then, like, it makes sense if he did a podcast. They go, well, I'd have to care. Like, Enough you know about I mean? everything. Yeah, I'd have to wake yeah. up and, like, be like, I'm going to scream again and do whatever I, or, be, or, com- or get angry. And I never wanted to make fun of celebrities as much. I didn't really, you know... I didn't want. I wasn't interested in that, so I just needed to find something. So it just took a while. I was like, I, I want to do this. I want to do this properly. This is a good idea, though. I yeah. like this. Like, so, I'm already intrigued. Yeah, yeah we were talking. To, we were. We, I just got to set it up when we go back to to New York. I, you know, there's one I want to do, but it's gonna be it be tough because it's traveling. Where I would go to all the women I've had sex with, and I'd have ask them if uh, to tell me their honest opinion. <laughs> oh my god. Of me <laughs> in the night, and no hold, no, because now there's time, right? They're not like we're not. Into each other, anymore, yeah. So they, they could be fully honest. Oh, no. Yeah, <laughs> That's amazing. I want to. I want to see if I could. Uh, try. I might do it in the new year. I might travel. It, I'd have to yeah. ask them if they would sit on a podcast with me and go to the city, go to their city, and and do it. What this it? this this would pick up traction. This is a this a, sounds like viral video to me. This would be hilarious. Like I have to like. Uh, <laughs> I but it's getting them to to agree to do it. That might be is yeah. going to be a tough one. So I might do five. I know Toronto. That's where I, I lived most of my life. So I think I'm going to be back there, and I think I'm going to record it. I'm going to I'm going to talk to them. I'm going to present the 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 like. I don't know if it'll be a podcast that'll be like you know every all the time. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think yeah. it just might. I might pick five girls that I've been with and be like, "Would you? It's like a sit mini series. Yeah, yeah. Would you sit with me and then tell me like tell me the truth uh, <laughs> about our sexual and tell me about me? Why I'm a shitty person." And we never worked out. I can already tell this would be a hit. I I was so pumped. I was uh, not pumped about it. I was just I was just like, man, I'm interested in. It's such a good idea though. Because there's a girl I I've, uh, I used to see, I used to see, and we're still friends. And I tell her my stories. I'd be like, oh, and then she was, she was she's dope about it. I'd be like, hey, I was with this girl, and she would die laughing. No, she would just laugh, and it was just very funny that you know because sometimes sharing those stories with what women you've been with is weird. They're like, why yeah. are you telling me this? But she was so. She doesn't care. She just thinks she's supportive. She just thinks it's funny, I guess. She's never really jammed me up and said, don't talk, don't do this. You're being very disrespectful. So that's where the idea came from. I go, imagine if I just went and even interviewed her. You know what I mean? Um, this is brilliant, though. I don't so know. This is a fucking good idea. So it's probably going to get taken now. <laughs> Man, could you imagine? And there's a little credit hey, at the yeah, end. Yeah. Thank you, Dave for Hedge. <laughs> it's probably going to get stolen. Uh, but it... Because... I was either going to do that, um, because I've always, I'm going to do that, but I want to do a fringe show. So I was thinking about the fringe show of doing like, uh, talking about anxiety or those stories. Like, because I don't know, you know, I always get into these, uh, there was this one, the same girl that I tell all these things, I was with her and, um, we were, we were having sex and you know, when you take, she was like, she was like ripping my underwear, not like sliding them, but you know, when you take the man, like the underwear off. Um, sometimes it's, it's gentle, but she like ripped it. Right. <laughs> and what happened was when she did that, it's so gross. Uh, I was wasted. She was wasted. Um, semen shot in the air. Like it was oh, gross. God. And I'm laying there and I could see it in the air <laughs> and it landed on my forehead, uh, bro. Oh, no. <laughs> and, I, and I just fell asleep and woke up in the day. With semen on your head? Hey, man, my underwear on. I went to the bathroom to try to pee in my underwear, and I almost went to pee, and like, holy shit, my underwear on backwards. I was like, I don't even know how that happened. It was just a, and we laughed about it, because I was like, you know, and she was like, oh, I'm sorry. I go, yeah, he whipped it off so aggressively. <laughs> so, and we would we would laugh, and I it was that summer with her where she, I was, I was like, I was like, man, I got to tell these stories somehow. That's actually fucking. I think why the anxiety thing is good. Uh, why I like the idea of that podcast because everybody, when you have your anxieties, you always think they're my anxieties. But then when you share them, you realize everyone has everyone them. fucking has them, and it kind of loosens it up. You it get more calm about up. it. Dude, yeah. You get calm, and, and and you you know like there's there's like I you know they'll do things when they do that thing when they when they touch on mental illness a month or a week, yeah, and then yeah. they'll talk about it. And I'm like, I think it should be an ongoing conversation, anyways. And I'm not gonna sit do this podcast to be like. I'm the hero of yeah, it. You yeah. know what I mean? I don't want to do that. I don't even want to take any. I'm not, I, And I suffer from it, but I don't suffer it as some people that there's like my sister suffers from it way worse than I do. And so does my mother. So there's I'm not suffering it from like intense, you know, but I would do I, I you know, I would like to talk about it. And that and that's where this the stand up. I want to do a show 
were I just do, do this like I started talking about not like you know how our family should see a therapist our Middle Eastern family should see a therapist but we we never did because I don't know if it's an ethnic thing where you it's like weird it's an ethnic thing it's anything because I always go you know when you hear like a kid go like a parent go tell me about your feelings and you're yeah. like man I never <laughs> yeah, I never, <laughs> I never <laughs> like because then I go man imagine I asked my dad his feelings like he's been holding on to that shit probably for like 40 years <laughs> he'd explode right he flicking the fuck out <laughs> yeah so I always say I never wanted to see a therapist I didn't because I didn't want to snitch on my family I but, looked at it as snitch yeah that's how that's how I would see it too yeah, yeah I didn't look at it as like I'm therapeutic I was like I ain't no snitch so I just a large 20-30 minutes of my uh, stand up now is just talking about uh, like like oh, of course I want to see it. My, should my mom see a therapist? Yeah, because she did this. But look how lovely she is. She, you know what I mean? Like yeah. just going back and forth, and it's d- dealing with anxiety. So I wanted to to take that eventually to. I want to do Fringe this year. So I don't know whether to do that. I don't even know why I'm telling you all this. It's like uh, uh what is it called when you're talking too much about yourself? Well, gross. What you, well, it's not gross because this is <laughs> it's gross. this is your episode. Oh shit! Okay. Who, who else are we gonna fucking yeah, talk yeah, about? Right. Let's get back you. into it. No. Yeah. But no. I like what you're saying. You know, you do make a good point. I thought about it too when uh, we say that we have a week of awareness or a day for for mental illness and anxiety. Yeah, yeah it should be longer because everybody yeah. goes through them. And I know even myself, it, it's people don't think about it. They're like, oh, you you know, you're happy. You tell jokes. You're not. But sometimes you get this anxiety where you don't even know where it's coming from. Like sometimes it's overwhelming. Oh. Like, why the fuck am I anxious? And nothing's going wrong. But you're feeling it, right? It's like uh, I've cried. I've cried numerous times. I just started But crying. when you don't know the reason or right. you have something that just overwhelms. It's overwhelming. And, dude, it happens to my sister. And, I, you know, I was home for the holidays and I sat with her in her room because she was crying. She, like, you know, you know, she, she, she would tell me, she was, I don't know how to make it stop. It's fucked up. It's fucked up. But it's and everybody. I don't know what it is. It's you fucked up. Some worse than others. But it's like a stain. You know what it uh, feels like? It's like a stain you can't get out. Yeah. You know what I mean? I think that I don't know. I, I, it's just like you don't know. It's just like you don't know why it's doing this to you. You're like, I didn't do anything. Like, I, why, why are you doing There's nothing. I'm not sad about anything. Nobody died. But you just have this overwhelming feeling, like you said. And, and, and you're right. Like, I remember working at, at a pizza place when I was in college. And I had and I had gone through my first anxiety, which I didn't know what it was. And I also did ecstasy. So I thought it was the oh. serotonin. It could have been. And the mix of me getting anxiety for the first time. And I, I didn't know. I went to a... I went to first. I was like, maybe I, I'm an idiot. I bought two albums. I bought John Mayer and Tupac. I thought that <laughs> would help me. A good mix. <laughs> like if I listen to these, it'll At all the be same solved. Time. Yeah, <laughs> same time. And that didn't work. And I went to see a doctor, and he said, "Get uppers or up, get uppers." I go, "That's I don't want to do that." And then I told my best friend, not even sorry, my friend, we're dri- I'm driving him home. And I go, "Yo, man, I think I want. I, if I had thoughts, I didn't know how to talk about depression or suicide." Especially with a dude, I go, man, I've had thoughts about killing myself. And then he looked at me and goes, man, I didn't sign up for this. <laughs> <laughs> but that's why I can't tell anybody. Well, you just, because that's a heavy, people are going to be your friends, man. But that's a heavy, like, you know, people will be there for you. But be, your friendship is tested when someone goes, I'm going to, I want to kill myself. Like, that's when you really have to start being a friend. Everything else I feel you, you uh, being a friend is pretty easy. Yeah. It's like, you know, I'll come hang out with you. I'll pick something up for you. But when... The you don't really work as a friend. Yeah. Very seldomly are you really work like a job. But like if your boy goes, hey, think about killing myself. You're like, okay, like I'm a friend now. I have to do what a friend has. I have to do something, right? So it was funny, and he got out of the car and walked home. What? He was distraught. Imagine your boy going, I I thought about killing myself. I think also it puts you in a weird line because you're like, if I say the wrong thing. And this guy kills himself. Am I fucking responsible? Yeah, like, am I I'm putting, yeah it puts it's him in work. a weird. It's it's not it's not because everything else you've been kind of a friend, but you've not you've been you've come in and a friend as breakups. You've been there like how many easy times shit. a year? Easy shit. How many times a year you've been a friend? Yeah, like you've done friend shit. Maybe twice a year you do it. The rest you're just you're talking at someone. Yeah, and then you're going to bars and shit. But when there's no heavy lifting, not at all. Barely. Yeah. There's barely. You know, I, you can. I, I'm, am I? I'm, I don't think I'm lying. You know like what I'm saying? see a movie they didn't like, you're going to be like, it's okay, bro. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's okay. And then he, you hear your buddy or your, your girl that's a friend just bitch for 20 minutes. Yeah. And then you're listening. There's not, you're not doing anything. So that aspect, you know, it's it's tough. And then when I started, I'm, I worked at a Papa John's pizzeria, and I did the same thing where I told, I think I told uh, someone about my anxiety at work, and they said they had the same thing, and I felt better. 
I go, man, if you, and I was like, man, we just got to talk about this. Yeah. We just talk about it. And like more than just one day or one week or a status update. I think if it's discussed more. And I think that was the idea when I did the, I did like, um, it was called Beautifully Manic in Toronto. It was just like three shows I did, like small venue, just to test it out. I wanted to just talk out the material and see if I can take it to a fringe this year. And it would be dealing loosely, not with the idea of, like, I'm going to attack anxiety and depression. I'm not that, I didn't want, I'm, you know, I'm not a, like an expert. I just wanted to be like, here, these are my anxieties with me and my family. Maybe I should have see. maybe I should see a therapist. Because, like, I think ethnic people, uh, not as much, I don't know. I don't, I'm, I'm, I don't have facts. But well, I, I can I, tell you uh, anecdotally in this room, there were two ethnic people. Um, as a Greek, I don't, it's the same thing. <laughs> yeah, we can't. <laughs> Yeah, I'd be like, yeah, we'll go see a therapist. I'd be like, excuse me. <laughs> Your dad is going to be like, what? Like, yeah, you know, why, what happened with you? <laughs> where, where did the DNA go wrong? Why, yeah. why are you weak? Because it is. Because it's like I would tell, I would talk with a white comic friend of mine, and he would tell me, like, you know, I just felt like, you, you know, like my, my, my family didn't love me. And I'm like, because the words are not showing. And I go, yo, I remember my mom would tell us. When we would be bad, she'd be like, I hope to see you in coffins. Yeah. <laughs> right? Like it's an Arabic girl. Yeah, like, right? Yeah. And then we would always be like, yo, that's fucked. But we, I didn't grow up going, oh, I'm going to do meth now because she said that. Because you understood where it came from. You understood the difference between an expression and her actually hating you, which wasn't yeah, the case. Yeah, yeah. And it, but I also knew I probably was fucking around. I probably knew I was being a beat bag of shit. Like this is their house, not my house. Like They're doing all the work here. <laughs> I'm not doing anything, so I, you know, I, I don't know. And my dad will say, I love you, you know? My mom says a lot, which I'm very appreciative. I love her back. But my dad, you know, he'll say it like once in a while, but I know he does. Yeah. You know, My dad, same thing. It's rare to get it from him, but I know, you know. Yeah, even, if he didn't, even if he didn't, you know, I don't, I don't know. I, I don't know if that would lead me to crystal meth is what I'm saying. Like, yeah. I don't know if I'm, I'm going to throw <laughs> I, my I whole life away. I never had that idea. I never, you know, I never had that where I'm like, my parents... You know what I'm saying? I just thought they were like psycho Lebanese people. I go, this isn't how they must have interacted and wherever they came from. But it is weird when somebody says, I feel like I wasn't loved enough. That's why I'm doing meth. I'm like, dude, I got beat up. Like, <laughs> I know. <laughs> I, I and I'm not, you know, now in this generation, you got to be like, hey, man, I'm, I'm, you know, you, you can't diss people. You, you have to be hella sensitive. I'm not saying that that's, you can have those feelings. Yeah, of course. I'm not going to sit here. Everybody reacts differently. Yeah. What I'm saying is we didn't have that initial reaction of, okay, now I'm going to go down the slope. Exactly. I just don't know why I didn't, like, it didn't, like, I was think about the things that, do. my mom, our parents used to make us kneel if we were bad, me and my cousin, against the wall. And if our asses hit the ground or our foot, they'd come around with, like, a ruler and smack us in the oh, ass. Hardcore shit. Hardcore shit, shit that's man. Like, that's like boarding school type of shit. Yeah. And then we were, but we were being bad. I, <laughs> I, none of that... As I'm telling you it now, I don't think any of that fucked me up growing up. Like, I didn't think about it when I was a kid. Do you think it's because every time it would happen, there was a reason? It wasn't randomly like you're sitting there, it's like, get, Dave, get, get up and go to the fucking wall. Maybe because you felt like I was kind of a shit kid. Yeah, we were in shit. And, but I, I guess, or maybe I was just stupid. Like, I didn't, <laughs> you didn't get it. <laughs> I didn't get it. It I was normal. Just, you know, I just grew <laughs> up and I thought it was normal. I thought it was normal, maybe. I go, oh man, I bet you all these other people are doing it. Or I, I, I might have chalked it up to things. As opposed to facing it, I might yeah. have just put it up. I go, oh, it's Middle Eastern parents. Oh, it's this, mm -hmm. and I, you know, I never dealt with it. So again, I'm not saying you can have those, you know, like your, your those feelings. But I'm, I'm just more curious of why I didn't come out worser when, when your mother goes, I hope to see you in coffin. <laughs> that's a crazy thing to say to a child. It's a good expression. It's a good expression, but that's a fucked up thing if your ki the kid's not developed. Yeah, he's just like what <laughs> coffin. Now I just think it was a good battle rap rhyme. I want to <laughs> so see you guys like, in coffins. I was like, oh, like my mom had bars back then. <laughs> she was ready. She was ahead of her time. <laughs> she was. She's still. She's still ruthless, but very loving. But it's, yeah, it's crazy. The things we take with us, and also that you're right. Though nowadays, uh, I feel people would react differently. They wouldn't. Even the shit that I went through when I was a kid, I feel like now if you put, oh, you're toast. Your parents yeah. are going to jail, man. Yeah. If you wrote, like, if you told somebody in a in a newspaper or, or on an interview, your parents, they'd be toast, man. Back then, I, you know, I think so. Like, you know how much case, case you can build against, like, oh, the mentality, the brain. You know what I mean? I don't know. I just was literally laughing out loud of how crazy. It's <laughs> crazy. But I feel like we turned out, I mean, none of our stories are as hardcore as, like, the crazy shit, you know, you've heard or whatever. Yeah. So that's true, too. We're, you know, take it with a grain of salt. But I still feel like we turned out, in general, 
pretty good. Pretty decent. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I always obviously have fucked up issues. You know, maybe I channel it into stand up that helps out a lot. That does help out a lot. I get to go up and talk it out in yeah. front of a group of people, strangers. And then, you know, and then we get to laugh together and stuff. Say, uh, it's very therapeutic for me, yeah. too. Same thing. It, when you feel that somebody's feeling it, and yeah. I'm like, I know exactly what this guy, I know why he's mad, or I know why he feels this way. You know, even if it's half the crowd or whatever, you feel like there's yeah. a connection there. Right away, you're like, oh, fuck, it's not just me. Look, yeah. we're experiencing this together. It, 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 it's, it's just funny when you, I just, I don't know where I heard it, but it was like, so the parent was like, I just want to know how, how do you feel? How do you feel, Ethan? Or whatever it was. And I was like, oh, man. I don't think anyone's asked me that until I was yeah. like 30 or some yeah. shit. I don't know. My parents never asked me that. It was just do it. It was not how do you feel about just it. Just do it. Just get it done. Or complete it or figure it out. But don't, don't, I don't care. To, I don't care how you feel. How long, uh, you want to stay in New York or you're thinking of coming back to Canada or what's your, what's your I stay, goal? I, you know, I've always, I've always wanted to, I love Toronto the most. I love that city the most. I, and I have my most comfort is there. Maybe it's, maybe it's been there for like 10 years before I moved. But I, I always wanted to go to the U.S., you know what I mean, since I was younger. So, I, you know, the thing with L.A., I was like, I, I, I lived there for six months, like in 06, like long, long, long time ago. And I, in, when I, I was like, oh, I'm going to come back, you know, because I thought I, that's the place where I wanted to live. So when I got there and I was living, I go, I didn't, it wasn't all bad. It wasn't awful. Like I'm making it sound like it's awful. It wasn't. I just was like, I don't know. And then I had a chance to just go to New York because I was subletting. I was looking for an apartment with a homie. Like, you know, we were trying to get a lease, which was just, we were having so, it was such a difficult time. It was just a hard time for me and him. Maybe it was just a combo of me and him wasn't working out. You know, when you tell your boy, I'm going to live with you, and it's kind of hard to slide out. You can, yeah, but. Yeah. And then I was subletting two months in Silver Lake, three months. And my buddy Jeffrey uh, was just like, we were talking about New York one day. And he goes, and well, I've been, we've been looking for an apartment for so long, for a while now, three months. And then he was like, oh, man, you, we were talking about how New York is dope. And he was like, oh, man, you know, he was thinking about living there. And then he's like, man, why don't you move there? He goes, you, have, you, have, you don't have an apartment. You don't have a car. You, know, you don't have a girlfriend. You just have your bags. You can go and then come back. And That's then a good I'll, point. I went, yeah. And then, never, then I got in the, a lift to go um, see an apartment. And on my way there, I get out, I go in the driveway, the, the person who's showing me is walking me through the alley, and I go, I had this feeling, I go, man, I've been here before. I had already seen, that's how much we were looking. I saw this house a month ago. Oh. And this is the house that had a cockroach on its back when the lady was giving us the application form. And I told <laughs> so I went in there and fake took pictures and left, and then I talked to a very funny comedian who used to live here, Patrick Akeem, on the phone. I just, he was just like, oh, man, why don't you just go to New York? And we just had to, like, I talked to him on the street for, like, 30 minutes. And then I just was like, you know what, I man, I'll try it. I have, I have some friends there. Why not? And then it was just, I got there, and it was very helpful. Everyone helped me out. And then I found an apartment a month, like, after. Like, I got there on May 1st. I sublet it, and then I found a, uh, a room June 1st. That's not bad, actually, a mm. month. No, man. Especially in New York. Yeah, it was in, in Ridgewood, you know, very, very, it was great, you know. And I got to do some spots down there, and it's fun. But yeah, I does it feel like home for right now? Like when you think it feels, it, it feels like you know, it feels when you fly in, you feel like ah, oh, yeah, I'm yeah, here. yeah. You I, get yeah, that? Yeah, I get okay, that. I was good. like, oh, cool. This is cool. You know, just it's a cool ass city. You know what I'm saying? It is a cool ass city. And and you know the yeah, and it, it's got everything. I like the 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 tightness of it. I enjoy like you know the buildings. You can walk. You know the weather. Obviously the snow. But I'm used to snow since I was a boy. I was born in Canada, so that's not like. I'm not what you know when the uh, Canadians move to LA, they're like, I can't, I'm done with the snow. I, shut up. <laughs> just, like, what, you, you're gonna just turn your back on snow for the, like, who are you? What are we, like, 90 year olds from Florida? Yeah. Like, yeah. You're like, oh, I can't deal with the snow anymore. I'm like, okay, man. Like, I, that's fine, but I just always find it that every Canadian that moves to LA is like, I'm done with the snow. Like, they. But then they always end up back here. Not even, even if they don't even end up back here, it's like, they're just so like, ah, sun every, like, they're just the, the, like, if, if, I feel like they might have hated snow all the time, but if snow was a human and found out that, if they were like, yeah, I'm fucking done with you, snow would be like, didn't you make snowballs with me? Yeah. 
Well, you used to love me. <laughs> you just turn on me. You love me around Christmas. Yeah. What about snow days? You fucking hate me on fair. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Exactly. That's funny. So <laughs> it's like that kind of where I'm like, if snow was a human and shit. That's actually funny. Yeah. I, I never thought about, it, but it's true. I do appreciate snow in small segments. Like I do like it around Christmas. You're I, using it. Like, yeah, I'm using it. Then like, get the fuck it. out of here. Now yeah. you want it out, so you're just <laughs> using it. But it's just such a human thing. It's like when you pray to God when you're on like when you need money. And yeah. Then, yeah. And then when someone's like, uh, so you believe in God? Nah. That's stupid. Yeah. Yeah, so it's just like the same kind of like fucking human traits. That, that I like that. Have, That's yeah. fucking hilarious. Oh, but yeah, it's good. It's good that in New York, like I said, you're close. Yeah. And comedy wise, you're going to be jumping on what? Maybe two stages a night if you want to. If I can, I just have to put some work in. I just have to actually, because, you know, I have to actually work and nobody, you know, they don't know who I am. So I just got to const. I have to, when I get back, because I'm very grateful for all the work I was able to do. Um, in the summer in in Canada, so now I'm gonna the, when I get back on Sunday, I'm gonna have to actually go do it. I know a couple know of mean? good New York uh, comics, so if you want, I'll um, I'll look into getting you some yeah. stage time and shit like that. Nice, nice, yeah. nice. There's some there's some out there that, that like some Canadians that live there: Aaron Berg, Phil Hanley, Alex Bavone, Nathan McIntosh. Oh, Nathan McIntosh is in uh, New York. Yeah, he's been this there for six years. Hilarious. Yeah, I've known him since he was like nineteen. Oh no, twenty. We we in Toronto. We started together, so that that was another reason to move out there too. Him and Al- Alex. So I've no, I've been friends with them. So I'm like I had people already out there, which was great. It's, it's a comforting thing to have. Yeah, you're not alone. Team. You're not alone. You got your homies out there. So I was like pumped for that. Because that's the one thing that I always think of when I'm going somewhere new. Yeah. Is if you have nobody, it sucks. It sucks because you could enjoy the city for what it is, but it's not the same as mm-hmm. having somebody to share, share it with, with you yeah. and also to call up to ask for something. Yeah. Like I don't know the fucking city. Exactly. So I luckily with those and then another guy, Julio got. Sorry, Julio Gararate, who I met. Um, in I met him in Canada, but then now you know we chatted through text and stuff. So. Also, very funny dude. Good people down there. So, so Toronto. You said you have mad love for Toronto. Always. How, is it? Uh, what is it? What's? What about Toronto makes you be like, ah, this is it. This is the place to be. Is it the people? Is it Not the way the shit's people. laid out? It's just the way shit's laid out. You know, um, the comedy scene I always love because you know I started there. But it's just the way, and it's not as busy. Do you know what I mean? It's got the big city stuff, but it's not as intense. Like you're not overwhelmed, and you, but you have big city stuff there. That's how I, that's how I look at it. That is interesting. Like New York is like a, a steroided up Toronto, like just on roids and shit. So it's like Tor- Toronto's got that vibes of like you know those cool dive bars, the the sections like Parkdale and and um and Qu- like Queen Street. It's got all that dope stuff, but it's I'm never overwhelmed. I'm never on the train like oh my god, there's like so many people here, and it's just got yeah that that's how for me I, I enjoy it. Maybe since I'm old. No, you know I mean, I mean Tor- Toronto's not a bad city. Toronto's a nice city. Yeah. You get, if you talk to Montrealers and stuff, it has that whole a beef, from yeah, sports, yeah. right? From sports, yeah. But that's all it's from. It's from yeah, sports. Yeah. Who argues architecture? <laughs> I know. Right? <laughs> like, what are they going to say? Oh, the infrastructure's bad. That's the only problem. Nobody ever says that. <laughs> it's like, why do you hate Toronto? The fucking Leafs. Like, <laughs> yeah. I love the Raptors. Yeah. So by yeah. default, I should be all about Toronto. Well, and they're, they're doing like the music scene there is like great now. Like it's one well, hip hop. They're fucking, no. they're breaking in completely. They're breaking in completely. And the comedy's the comedy's gone better since I started way better. There's way more options, like an enormous amount of options compared to when, like, let's say me and Nathan were running around or Pat, Pat Bircher. It's just not, it was, it was just smaller. And then now it's like, yeah, there's so much stuff going on. The corner, the comedy bar, absolute yuck yucks, all the independent shows and stuff. It's great, man. That that is the obvious um, kind of, uh, I guess, tell that it's a booming city because not only is it, does it have so many comedy spots, but it could sustain them all. Yes, it, yeah, yeah. Whereas that, here, I mean, truth be told, if we'd open up another two comedy play in English, like two clubs, yeah, there's no guarantee you're gonna sustain them, no, right? We're having no. trouble sustaining two. Exactly, like yeah. one is being sustained. Yeah. So it's no, a, that's it's a city. It's booming. It's it a, is yeah. It's a big city. It's a bit. It's fun. So that's why probably generally. And then the people that are still there that are that are my friends too is, is also. And then the rest they got some. They got good places to eat. It's just super fun. It just feels like it's growing and stuff like that. Yeah, Toronto's uh, definitely doing well. It's not like uh, it's not like an Ottawa. I don't think Ottawa's ever going to change. No, I don't know. I don't think so either. Ottawa's like a big village. Yeah, <laughs> I don't mind it, but I don't think I can live there. My cousins live there. The crowds are great there. Yeah, no, they love comedy. They I'll love comedy. I've had, yeah, yeah. I've had a lot of fun doing comedy there, but in terms of the actual city, fuck, there's nothing to do. Like when you new. leave the comedy club, yeah, it's kind of fucked. But I, yeah, the, it is. The crowds are like I've done like clubs there and theaters, and they're great, man. They're like they're great. 
hands down over like the last 10 years they've been awesome yeah they want to laugh they want to laugh there's a reason yeah they're in fucking Ottawa they're in Ottawa yeah there's there's nothing, <laughs> there's nothing to do like and a lot of them work for the government too so a, a lot of shit that we talk about on stage they can't talk about at work they're gonna get in trouble oh right? yeah, so yeah they yeah, steer yeah. clear about it but they have all these feelings yeah so yeah. they get to the club and like it's exactly what I fucking think <laughs> but I can't tell because Susie from HR is gonna like, yeah. gonna get me fired do you think Montreal also suffers from like the just for laughs thing Mm, in in what sense? That you get all your spoils, you get all your fix in the summer and you're like, oh fuck the rest of the year. Like why? I've seen the bigger comics. Like why do I have to why do I have to why do I have to keep go- coming to local to local stuff? I think yes because uh, people have told me uh they've asked in the summer say uh, I'm yeah. on a show. Like, "Oh, is it just for laughs?" And I was like, "No, it's just at the club. Just, you know, come by." Yeah. And they're like, "Ah, but just for that, you know, uh, yeah, yeah. we were thinking of getting tickets for just for last." Yeah. Like they think that's all there is. There, is, there are a lot of people like that. You're, you're actually yeah. right because that's, that I feel that's like it's so huge that it just kind of it's like it's like going to a huge music conference or a festival like like um, why am I drawing a blank on it? Uh, Coachella and then you you know, but there's a bunch of little Coachellas the whole year. You're like, I ain't going. Uh, yeah, why would I do? Why would things? I do that? I, I'm saying the psychological. Uh, part of it like with i'm just wondering because you do have a city that's kind of, this is a dope city you could sustain more than two comedy clubs if people saw it they, yeah you're you know, right if there was like the, the there was a, a switch in the psyche because it's like it's booming like you go around and like the, there's parts of like like what is the the, the plateau like it seems like it's a legit filled with hipsters, like dope at like people just running around. So I don't know why you couldn't put a like a like a comedy club in there. I've thought about that. Eighty the, to hundred people, but it's also the demographics here are a little off because we do. It's a student city. We have a lot of students, yeah. and I don't know if you've noticed, but yeah. there's been a lot of university students that have chosen to go the route of, uh, oh, you can't talk about that. Oh no, that's offensive. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. that also doesn't really go in with comedy in the classical sense. Um, if people are trying to police your words and what you're saying. Yeah. So that might cause it to turn from a, a comedy spot or an open mic, it'll turn into like a poetry type of reading lab because people will be like, I can't do my stand-up anymore because everybody keeps getting mad at me every time I get off the stage and tell me you can't talk about that, you can't talk about this subject. But what so- happened though, I don't know, maybe you maybe because I'm older than you. I feel I'm old, way older than you. What? Ha- I don't know if I was ever around that when I was a kid. I don't know, even in high school or college, where, where well, did that to, all To be fair, that even start? when I was in university... Dude, in 2008, 2010, this wasn't an issue. It, it was... Did, I yeah. never thought about this. This was recent. This happened in the last couple of years. But where are these kids getting all this information and, like, trying to be, like, like, vo- like warriors? Like, I don't understand the thing, where they don't the time. Ha- they haven't <laughs> lived yet or whatever. Yeah, it's, it's, like, nothing worse than a 17-year-old that's, like, you know, you shouldn't really talk about your own culture that way. And you're, like, you fucking... What, what are, are you, you talking, talking about, about, nerd? What are yeah. you saying? Not even nerd in a sense you're a nerd. I'm just saying using that word. It's not, like, a nerd, like, the, the typical way it is. It's, like, why? Well, I, I don't understand maybe... I don't know. I just don't remember being that age and having or even knowing someone who wasn't even my friend that was that into this stuff. Like I re- doing that. I don't know. I don't know if this is a... Uh, I don't know where it all started. A few, a few years ago, this is when I was like, oh shit, this is real. I remember hearing that like um, the Bill Burr, Joe Rogan, some of the people refused to do universities. Or they stopped doing the colleges. Yeah. And uh, they talked about why. They go, because fuck man, you get people that cross arms and then after the show they think, oh, this was offensive and you made fun of this and they don't take it for comedy. They just want to analyze everything you're saying yeah. and they're being weird. I was like, okay. And somebody had asked me to do a set uh, at McGill. They yeah. had like some comedy night or whatever. And uh, I went there. They didn't tell me beforehand not to talk about yeah. anything. But when I got there, I was in the room. They had like this triangle outside. And it goes, this room is a safe space. You can't talk about this. You can't this, 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 this. And I was like, yo, I'm going to talk about half that shit. Like, I don't know what this is, yeah. you know? So when I, the first thing I opened up with is like, look, I know this is supposed to be a safe space. It's not going to be a space safe for the next 15 minutes just so yeah. we're all in the same boat. Like, if you get offended, get the fuck out, right? Yeah. And I started talking my stuff. I had half the people with me. Half were like, yeah. like, oh, no, he can't say yeah. that, right? And that's when it became clear. I was like, fuck. I thought university would be more fun. Like, I remember when I was in Concordia, like, I thought it would be guys, guys, girls having just a good time. Like, oh, fuck this. And yeah, let's talk yeah. about that. This pisses me <laughs> off. And it turns out they're like... No, you know, actually, that demographic gets really sad when you use this term. And really, motherfucker, like, what are you talking about? Just have yeah, a good yeah. time. This isn't serious, you know. This isn't. I'm not a politician. Stop treating me like I'm a politician. Yeah, you're ex- everything you're saying is a hundred percent. I'm not trying right. to win your vote. And then I was like, fuck. Now I see why the Rogans and the Bill Burrs who could make a fortune doing the colleges aren't doing because yeah, like, I don't right. want to deal with this nonsense. Like I hate, even now I hate getting off stage. And even if I'm even if it's the comedy nest. And I have people, you know, outside when they're shaking your hand, like, hey, I had a good time. And you have that one person that'll pick some random thing yeah. and be like, you know, uh, my brother's allergic to yogurt. So that yogurt joke is like, <laughs> really? I got to 
Oh, your brother, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Dude, like, the best guy, best audience member I've ever had in my life. I walked off stage and this guy gave me, um, in Montreal at the Nest, he gave me, uh, it was like weed. He And I didn't know what it was. He just dapped me. And then I, I, I don't know if you might have been there. I went in the green room. I look and it's it, it was in a can. It was this was weed. last year. Last this is, year. Yeah, I was with you. Well, we were both on that night. He left his number. <laughs> Yo, that guy, that guy, wherever that guy is, man, like that guy's taking comedy how it is. Like he just sat there, he goes, yo, this is dope. And I'm going to gift this comedian after. I had a great time. <laughs> I had a great time. I still thought that was the best. Like what was I going to do? Text him and go, thanks, bro. Like it's just so crazy. But I, but again, you're right because I don't like doing the schools either anymore in Canada. I don't like, like to overthink. Uh, just, and I'm not even offensive. It's just like it's 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 it funny to me when when I'm you're you're angry on the behalf of another demographic. That dude at the comedy nest, and I, I don't use this joke yeah. anymore. But I just made a small joke about Greece, right? I'm Greek, and I made the joke was based around the economy, yeah. right? So I made fun of uh, it was because uh, people always ask me dumb questions. They find I'm Greek. They're like. Uh, Dude, what do you know about yogurt? Stuff like that. I don't know anything about yogurt, you know? And I had this whole thing where I went into, as far as I'm concerned, all yogurt is Greek yogurt as long as a German taxpayer paid for it. Like, stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. And, it, oh, they went like that. And I was like, wait, that's an, oh, that's not even an offensive joke. I'm the Greek guy making fun of Greeks. <laughs> no. And you guys are getting, what, offended yeah. on behalf of me? Who, who are you offended? Well, and it's not even that bad of a joke. It no, wasn't. It's not. Just talking about the economy. And it was so shocking to me that they took it upon themselves, like, in a good portion to gasp. On my behalf, I'm the guy with the microphone. Yeah. I don't need you. Clearly, I could speak for myself. I don't need you to, to be, be offended for me. Yeah, it's not. I, same thing happened a long time ago where I, I the, this white lady came up to me. She goes, I don't know. If, you know, you're talking about being Middle Eastern. I don't know. It just came, it comes across offensive. And in my head, I didn't tell her I should have. I'm like, hey, man. <laughs> hey, man. You buying a shawarma twice a week does not make you. You have no right to speak on because you you don't want to be Middle Eastern. You now contribute to the Arab League by yeah, buying shawarma because you only contribute it when it's dope. When you can, when you could take your friends to a, to a place that's gentrified somewhere in wherever area you live in Toronto, where it's Mustafa comes out and smiles at you. But when it's real, <laughs> when there's real problems, you're nowhere in sight. You're never going to be anywhere in sight. You're probably going to be like, oh, yeah, I guess Muslims are be like, or, or Christian Lebanese are being bad or whatever. You're yeah, going yeah. to do that. Just be that. It's the same way when like people listen to rap, you know what I mean? And, they, and they're not, you're not down with the culture. Yeah. You're n not that you're not down with the culture. You're just getting the good stuff of it. And then when it's time to like support actual things, you're like, no, nah, man, I just listen to. I just listen to Drake and Kendrick. That's it. That's it. With my college friends. I, I don't know. I don't. So don't, don't, I'm, what I'm saying is don't come in with the, I'm speaking on the behalf unless you're fully down to ride with that group all the time. You know what I've noticed though, Dave? The people who are fully down with the group don't do that. They don't, they do don't that, act yeah. like that at all. It's just like, I don't know where this, that culture came from where it's like, you just can't have a good time. Like, and if, there, if someone's being a monster, yeah, I'm all for stopping that person if they go up and they're just racist for 45 minutes man but they're doing like these even yet you know that you know what the part that bothers me the most it's like when you're talking to someone like that when i know deep down inside you know what that you're a logical person the part that makes me angry is not that you're challenging me it's the part that you're putting me through this bullshit and you know that you're full you of shit. Know. That's the part where I was like, I want to rip your head off because you were looking in each other's eyes. You know what you're doing to me twice. I can take the part where you're going to just critique me, but the fact that you're a knowledgeable person bothers me. You're not a person that grew up under a rock. You, you had all the technology, all the, all the same thing. You can dissect it the same way. You know I'm not a monster. Why are you doing this to me is the part that makes me the most fucking angry. It's this whole righteous, fake righteousness thing. Fake right? righteousness, yeah. They're like, uh, I'm, I'm a warrior. I'm just helping people out. I'm, yeah. I'm speaking for the people that can't speak. What do you... It's the same thing when a fucking dude or a girl goes, man, you know, the world's all this and that. I go, yeah, it is, man, but what are you doing? You're not helping the homeless. You're out partying. You're out playing board games at a cafe. You're doing fuck all, but you got a good 20 minutes that you take to every conversation. That's all you have. Right now, we're seeing here, right? People are boycotting Tim Hortons. Yeah. Right? Because they said, uh, so the minimum wage went up in Ontario or in just, I'm not yeah. sure how that works. But basically, they're like, wait, if we're going to afford this, we got to cut some benefits. Yeah. So people are saying we're going to boycott Tim Hortons because we're all about the people and we want them to have benefits. Well, if you really gave a shit that much, then you would have originally protested 
the federal government and being like, yo, reduce taxes a bit yep. so that they have more take-home money and then they don't need to depend on anybody for benefits. Or if you really cared that deeply, then why the fuck are you tweeting about this on your iPhone? What about boycotting Apple? What about the people that are building that shit, right? Uh, is it because yeah, the, the is, yeah. is it because they're foreigners? You're like, oh, they don't count. They're they're foreign. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're different, yeah, yeah. right? But this hypocrisy of yeah. oh, I'm gonna jump on this bandwagon now. Yes, boycott Tim Hortons. Yeah, yeah, dude. That's why you know what I mean. I, I told you earlier. I, I don't know the facts. I'm not gonna. I'm drinking one now. Yeah, me too. But that's the thing. I can't boy. <laughs> like I could boy if if I found out that like Tim Hortons came out and said, hey, uh, new rule. Don't hire black people. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Okay, yeah, let's boycott Tim Hortons. Boycott. Yeah, that, well, I'm not having that. But at as all. a business, they need to balance everything. Yeah. They always have to make a profit, right? They're like, well, yeah. if we're spending more here, we got to cut somewhere. Yeah, it sucks. But I, that's how I expect a business to run. But did someone again? I know nothing, so I'm not taking any point. I know here. a little bit uh, less you than know, nothing. You, you, a little you bit know less more than, than me. <laughs> but didn't they say they they were getting paid for their breaks? Yeah, I I thought that you know why I thought that was crazy, bro. I was like, I didn't even know you could do that. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I've never been paid for my breaks when yeah. I worked. I go, yo, that was a thing. Oh, I should have looked into it. That's dope. I thought they just, it's they don't pay you. I worked at like restaurants. Yeah, where normally they pay when you're on break, you don't get paid. It depends where you work. Oh, okay, I was like, oh shit. I, but most places I remember didn't pay you for breaks. Like you're on break. Why am I gonna pay you? Yeah, that's some things. When I heard that with Tim Hortons, I'm like, yo, they're living it over <laughs> there, man. No wonder they're so happy all the time, man. Yeah, Tim hey, Hortons breaks. <laughs> Unless you're in Montreal, they're always angry. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't. Um, they're not happy here at Tim Hortons. I don't know. I don't know, man. I, I I don't think Tim Hortons is a French thing, though. No, no. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I I think I think it's almost like an insult to the city to have a Tim Hortons. Here. Maybe I think because so. they I got bistro, they got all kinds they of little got dope places. Ca- cafes. Yeah. Why the fuck? And then there's Tim Hortons. Tim Hortons just and this is gonna sound wrong. Just reminds me of like the most Canadian guy to Same. come into a room with boots. Like he doesn't have the. I'm like, dude, you're you're getting snow everywhere. Yeah. And then he, <laughs> with a shovel, he's like, I just found a moose. You know, like yeah. that. Yeah. So it's like you bring it to the French. They're gonna be like, get the fuck out of here. We have something better. We have I real I, coffee. Yeah, I'm I'm all for anger and boycotting Tim Hortons in Montreal. There's no way you bring that trash. <laughs> we got city. better places. Yeah. Too do- it's too dope of a city to have, like, Tim Hortons. Even the structure of it, you no matter. T- also, Tim Hortons, like, if you put a fucking, uh, what is it, um, a fireplace in your place, stop doing that. It's still Tim Hortons. Like, <laughs> stop putting the fire. Nobody, just fuck off, right? I don't like it. Speaking of fireplaces. Um, snap for no reason. I went to visit somebody's condo, uh, a buddy of mine. <laughs> I yeah. hadn't been there to show him a condo. And he had, he didn't have a real fireplace. But he, he had his uh, TV screen. <laughs> but under it, he had another TV screen that I guess was cheaper that he bought. Yeah. And he would just have a fire That's kind of dope. <laughs> I was like, yo, that's, I, like, I don't know what to say about this. Like, I want to make fun of you, but at the same time, it's cool. It's a fireplace. So it's on two or just one? No, no, two screens. So one screen one is, is the fireplace yeah. and one is his TV. So instead of just turning the TV into a fireplace when he's not using it, he's like, I'm not going to fuck up TV like that. I'll just have a shitty um, flat screen on the bottom with the fireplace running. I'm all but, for that. Yes. Yeah, I'm all for it. I wouldn't make fun of your little- <laughs> that was That was, that was I well was, done. I was on the fence because like, yeah. I want to make fun of it. It looks cool. Like I like looking at it. You have a fireplace. You don't have to maintain it. You know. But No, that's smart. Who man. thought of that? Like I'm going to, I had never seen that's, this in my life. That's kind of genius. Yeah. <laughs> It's not genius, but I'm like it's kind of smart. That yeah, I don't want that's smart. I'm I wouldn't make fun of him. You wouldn't make fun of him. No, no, that's right. <laughs> he 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 knew what was happening and he set it up properly. I like that. Yeah, I do. You can appreciate that. I'll yeah. tell him. I'll let him know. Tell him no, I really really appreciate that. I wouldn't get a fireplace in my house because I'm too paranoid and anxiety. I'm I'm not about that. I don't know how because I keep I've seen videos of people. You, I never had a fireplace. Yeah. You got to clean the fireplace. You got to get this thing that you burn on the wood too to clean the chimney. You know? yeah. Or else all this shit is like super flammable after a while in the chimney. Oh really? Yeah, and your whole fucking place could go up in flames. I'm like these are not the That's chances. Too much. Yeah, I'm not playing with that risk. I, there's no like, way. I'll get Hydro Quebec to just heat my fucking <laughs> yeah. place. Up. Aren't they, that's the other thing is in, I don't know how much you know about Quebec, but I th- aren't they the only option here for electricity? Is just Hydro Quebec? I don't know. Is that wait, in, uh, like Montreal? Like who, who else yeah. is there? Like I I I don't see another company that competes with them because they had a commercial. Yeah. Like why are you advertising? Who are you advertising to? Oh really? That's yeah, I don't understand funny. it because the people that you're advertising to that don't have electricity are yeah, homeless. They're not going to see this commercial, <laughs> <I> mean, <laughs> right? That's crazy. And the people who already are with you. They're already with you. Who yeah. are you advertising Who to? Who are you advertising to? That's nuts. I don't know. It's a waste of money. It is a very waste of money. Way waste of money. We have no choice, right? When you're the monopoly, don't try to play it like, oh, we're still struggling. We're trying. It's like when the, it's not even the same, but I think it's funny. It's like when the WWE promotes. <laughs> it's like, dude, man, you ran out the other company. You bought it. Who are you competing against <laughs> right now? You're not competing against anybody. 
You're monsters. But apparently they're making money hand over fist right now. The WWE? Yeah, I just went to I I went to uh, an event in Toronto on New, J- December thirtieth. Live so event fun. taped? Live event, not taped, but it's a it was a raw live event. Oh, nice. Yeah, it was fun. I used to like wrestling a lot more as a kid and growing up and like in the raw era. Same that, the the that whole right, um yeah. I can't the get attitude over the raw era. era. I can't. It's like too great. Um, now I now because of a very funny guy Patrick Akeem, he watches it when I go st- when I go kick it with him. And I, I, he gets me back into it. So I'll, he'll tell me and give me the information. I have two buddies like that. that they're still into it. So they get me into yeah. it from time to time. But uh, I feel like it's, for me at least, what I used to enjoy in the Attitude Era, that whole um, anything could happen yeah. and fuck your boss and yeah, yeah. all that stuff. There's so much wrong, crazy wrong. energy. It was just crazy. It was just absurd. And the surprise aspect yeah. of it. I don't think they have captured it right now. I think now it's a lot more. About the wrestling. Yeah, it's a lot more about the wrestling. It's not a bad thing. I mean, bad. that's it's what they train yeah. for. But it's just it's it's more colorful now. Yeah. But I feel like they're targeting younger audiences. Like that's how it feels to me. Oh yeah, yeah, they're not. Yeah, yeah, that's smart. They are because yeah. Well, that's where the money is right now, right? Yeah. It's yeah. fucking thirteen-year-olds with uh, somehow disposable income. I don't know where they're getting it from. Or they, their parents. And, and yeah, they're mo- and it's easier to you know you're gonna please your thirteen-year-old. Once you get to seventeen, eighteen, you're like, oh fuck yourself. Yeah. Like, you go pay for <laughs> it. You gotta get that get that thirteen-year-old. Because they will influence their parents and stuff. But and you're right. Buy the merch. Buy all the merch. Back then it was just like, yeah, they were doing like grown up shit. Yeah, like, dude. There was like, uh, he he's married to him, but they they <laughs> no. got he drugged her and slept with her. And it, yeah. I remember like Triple H, uh, Vince McMahon's daughter. He the whole thing was he drugged her. Yeah. And he took her through a drive through chapel to marry her so that he could own part of the company. Like that's some crazy. Yeah, there's that's some kidnapping up. in here. Yeah. There's drugging people. Yeah, yeah <laughs> man, that's not cool. <laughs> <laughs> None of this would fly today, right? Not if you do chance, that, dude. Stephanie, Mc- yeah, it's, dude. I remember it would be like in driving Stone Cold, driving the ambulance, be, like beat be- him up. Yeah, in the exactly. Hospital. It was so good. But now I only I, I really like Brock Lesnar because how crazy <laughs> he just does whatever the fuck he dude, wants. He suplexes everybody. It's just so funny to watch him just toss people around. And he's a maniac. That's probably the only um, wrestler. That's the wrestler now I get excited for. But a live event, it was fun. Like we had a great time. It's a good. It's like a concert. It's just you're having a good time. It's nuts, dude. There was like parents were having a good time. You know what I mean? Uh, Hakeem almost got into a fight with a kid. That's fuck. Why the, would I kid? Hakeem <laughs> kept going uh, sell out to the. He was ch- doing chants. Uh, I think it was sell out. I forget the word he was saying. Just having fun. Yeah. And then the kid was like, no. And he was like, <laughs> I'm in the middle of him and he's screaming at Hakeem. I go, yo, they're going to go in. And it was funny. I was like, this kid's going to. Was having a good time. He's just oh, fucking we around. All, yeah, we were all having a good time and stuff. Like, fuck that pubeless prick. Yeah, <laughs> and that's the only. I was like, I was like, the heckles were like, if 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 a blog caught these hecklers, they would have shut this family down. The, the the dad was telling the kid, he giving him lines to say, and the kid was like, "You pee sitting down." <laughs> But you can't say that. Like back then, you said that, and you're like, "Yeah, man." But you didn't think anything of it, like in in a feminist yeah, way of exactly. like not empowering women. You're just like, "Hey, you piece it down like a chick." Yeah, like but, I'm not a chick. The yeah. Guy's like, <laughs> but I, I, we, me and Hakeem were laughing. He was he he was saying like, "Man, you can't do that." Like you know what I mean? You can't do that now. Like you, you know what I mean? If someone heard that, that could be an, an incident. That could be split screen on fucking CNN, or just even there, like a, like someone like you know like who like a, a guy or a girl would have been like, hey man, you can't say that. Why are you teaching your kid that? Yeah. Like, and then and the dads weren't ones to be to be told anything. They look like brute men. Oh God! <laughs> like that's what they would do. They're not. They're Start not backhanding fake. someone. Oh yeah, yeah, they're not. Like the, the the one of the dads was walking. He came up to us. He goes ah, jokingly. He goes. He goes elbows. Everyone's getting them, and he's just giving us elbows. It he's was just so fucking around. It's just a bunch of people. That's not saying they're having a good time, but I'm, it, it, we were just laughing about like in this time now. You can't say we were just. I heard it, and I was like not shocked because I've heard that stuff before. Not offended. But I was like, wow, I didn't know you. I thought everyone was being PC. But do you, isn't that crazy that even as a comic, you and Patrick Akeem thought about it. You're like, yeah. fuck, still now, this might be viewed upon oh, as... Yeah. Like, it's still in the back of your mind. And I feel like that kind of affects comedy when you're trying to be yourself. Yeah. And then you, you're you your own police officer now because you're like, oh, wait, is this going to offend yeah. this this group of people? Is this going to offend these? And you're... Instead of just being like, man, this is funny. People should... Li-. I'm going to say it because I think talk, it's funny. They were talking about it last night about how, like... Um, like about uh, some of the rooms in Montreal are policing comics, yep. and it's just like, and and they were asking me about other scenes. I go, man, it's everywhere. I, and I was telling them, I'm like, I don't. Does anyone? I, I for a while, I just felt like no one's doing comedy, like no one's doing stand up. Yeah. Like everyone was just either getting offended and writing a blog about it. So like, I don't know who's trying to be great anymore. I don't hear people. 
going, man, I'm going to try to better my jokes. It's like, did you hear what this person said? E- exactly. Did like, you see Chappelle's new specials? They just came out? I part, no, no, but but I, they, gonna yeah, they're going it. at him. You're going to love it. I like, love it because they're going at him and he doesn't give a fuck. And that's how it should be Yeah. because the problem is, what I don't like is people apologizing when they didn't do anything wrong. Yeah. Right? Like, if I said something that I truly think is funny and not, a, you know, I'm just trying to, yeah. and you get, I can't, I could apologize for the way you took it. But I can't apologize for no. telling the Joker, liking it. I don't think he did anything offensive. He I, didn't. He didn't. But people took. People are dissecting things. Like, well, I'm going to take this word. Yeah. I'm going to take this context. Put it like this. And this is offensive. But you know who he is. You know what he's trying to say. Yeah. Why are you trying to push into a direction that it really wasn't exactly. heading in? I, but he addresses it in this special. Well, yeah. And then he, now they're offended about him for uh, the stuff oh, about they? Louis. Yeah. That's what, what I thought you were talking about. Oh, no. The Louis C.K. thing. Dude, I had said it on this podcast. I've said it twice on two different podcasts, actually. So, Louis C.K. thing. I said it when it first happened. I go, I'd love to jump on the bandwagon and be like, fuck this guy or whatever the hell. But in reality, what it sounds like is he had a fetish. Like, he liked jerking off in front of people. Yeah. He didn't rape anybody. The only thing I found that was you could frown upon is the people that he worked with, that girl that he called into the office. and yeah. he, Because it's a context of, number one, it's at work. Yeah. Number two, it's an industry hard to get in. She's a woman. Yeah. You're putting her in a weird place where it's like, fuck, I, I want this job. Yeah, yeah. So even her saying yes doesn't count. But for the other one, where two comics, he met them at the club, invited them in the middle of the night, you want to come over to my house and drink uh, my, my oh, room? So, yeah. You went, Then he asked, you want me to whip out? Yeah, they're laughing. Like, yeah, whip it out or whatever. I'll jerk off. And you're taking that as, oh, it scarred him or whatever. It's like, come on, guys. He had Dude, a f- that's crazy if somebody, like, if somebody goes, I'm going to whip out my dick, I'd be like, no. No. I, dude, people, I yo, leave. can I whip out my dick? I'd be like, yeah, no. Yeah, and it's the- happened once. Somebody said, yo, can I whip out my yeah, dick? Yeah. Like, I was like, you, you got the wrong guy. This isn't for me. Yeah, I'm not saying that, like, I'm, I'm not, again, I'm just saying, I'm like, if someone ever tells me, if my boy goes, I'm going to whip, can I whip out my dick? You're like, get out of here. Yeah, like, can, I, can I jerk off in front of you? What are you going to say? You're going to be like, maybe. Yeah, it's Man. nuts. It's also I, you know, I, I just was like, I knew I was just like, it's a fetish, but it's yeah. like a weirdo. Like it's like weird. It's like yeah, you, it, where it gets, tr- not, it's where it's fucked up. It's like you're doing it at work. Yeah, now. and like, also to a fetish. person who's your subordinate, she's, you, yeah. you're putting her in a really fucked up position. So exactly. I agree with that. I'm like, yeah, horrible. Of course, he not only she should apologize, but. You you got to be careful when you're putting when you're hiring now. You got to think about it, like, hey man, you know. Yeah. I understand that completely. I'm not saying he's a hero, but l- you can't put everything in the same basket. Same basket, you know? yeah. Because yeah. it's he, not. He, I'm, I always wonder. I'm like, we, he could have went. There's got to be services where you go jerk off in front of someone. No, I don't know. I feel there's a service somewhere. Well, there must be. I mean, prostitutes. Like you can call a prostitute over and jerk and just off. tell her, I just want to jerk, jerk off, off in front of you. Yeah, but I think he they they were saying that it's a power thing. Mm. Like he was doing it as because he knew the people or something. He knew the people or something like that. And then yeah. even the, the, what they were mad at Chappelle about, I guess, is that he was calling them. He was making fun of the phone thing, like you know when she was on the phone. Yeah, she said, "I'm pretty sure he was jerking off." Yeah, and he, but why'd you stay on the phone? That's another one too, man. Where it's like we, I, I was talking with another comic. I'm like, it's different if you're in person with them, I guess, because there's a, you might feel helpless and stuff like that. But on the phone, I feel you could just. Hang, hang the up. fuck up. Yeah, hang. And also, it, what was she saying? At first, I wasn't sure, but then, like, I'm pretty sure he was jerking off or whatever, something like that. Yeah. So that's a weird thing to say. Like, what if the guy's just jogging or what if he's just tired? Like, Dude, I get awkward on the phone with my boy. If my boy's on the, calls me when he's on the treadmill, I go, hang up. It's weird. <laughs> Hang the fuck up, dude. If you're breathing <laughs> uh, not normal like how you normally are around me, hang up. I make him hang up. I go, get off the fucking treadmill. I'm not going to do this. You want me to sit here while you breathe? It's fucking weird. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, I'm out, man. But I felt the same way. I was like, wait, couldn't she just hang up? It's like, I was helpless. There was no way out of this situation. Yeah, there was. It was, it was a yeah. click away. But they, they go at him. Uh, no, I don't want to say, like, you know, even... I, um, people, I just think also people... Not, not those situations. I'm, I'm leaving those situations. I'm saying, like, people are... Certain people are just looking for you to slip up with words yep. and then pouncing those words and then just attacking. Like I think that's how 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 you know they're just looking like you said and then they'll 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 make their they'll build their own story. They'll build and the and thing is narrative. it makes them feel good. I find that people a lot of people now and I've noticed it and again anecdotally I've just noticed it yeah. from my interactions is instead of trying to better themselves in some way or feel better by doing something, yeah. it's this weird thing where they think if I take this guy down, yeah. I'm going to feel better. like, Or if I take her down, if I make her feel like she she, she doesn't yeah. matter, I'm going to matter to myself. Yeah. But it's really not the case because 
if you ask these people, I'm pretty sure, like, do you feel a lot better by doing this? Honestly, like, do you feel like you've gained anything in life? It's going to be a no, because what have they gained? How? If, yeah. If, if you're like, a shitty comedian and you try to go out a good comic, you're like, I'm going to bring him down a peg. Yeah. That Hannibal Burris, I'm going to bring him down. How the fuck's that going to make you a better comic by taking down Hannibal? No, it's not. It's not at all. It's not at all, man. It's just not. It's you're not going to get better. You're no. not. I don't know. I don't know why people are like that now. They don't want to just like I always try to better myself. Like, okay, I got to get better at this. I got to do this better. It's not like oh, I'm going to take him down and then I'll take that spot. Yeah, no, I, I'm not. I don't, I don't. I'm not that way as well. But yeah, it's fucked up. I don't know. I don't know. But I'll watch the specials. I yeah, you're gonna like him. You're yeah, gonna I'm, like I'm, him. I'm, I'm bad at that too. So give us, uh, give us some dates. Give us some websites. Where are the people gonna find you, Dave? Um, you can find me at uh, Dave Merhej, M E R H E J E dot com. That's where the website resides, and then from there, <laughs> I'll put stuff on, and then we can go from there. There'll be show dates, and if it's in your city and you feel the need to come out and want to come out, you could do that, and then you can add me on Insta uh, Instagram. I don't know what the handle is because I, I lost my password to my original one, <laughs> and I don't know how I can't get back in, so uh, my handle's weird there, but Twitter is Dave Merhej, and Facebook is Dave Merhej, and uh, yeah. Through there you find, this is all in the description. Well, I only make you say it for people that refuse to read. Fair and enough. They just listen, I like saying it, man. And they just listen. They go on yeah. their phones. But Dave, it has been a fucking pleasure. Thank you and for I'm gonna, me. And tomorrow I'm going to pass by. Nice. Uh, I have gave away um, two pairs of tickets. I have two more tickets. I, I think I'm going to put a video up tomorrow to give it away to people. Yeah, that would be great. Fill that place up on a Saturday. I'm, I'm pumped. And that's that. Thank you. No, thank you.